Увага, будь ласка. Увага на мене. Раз, раз, раз. Дякую. Ми продовжуємо наші виступи. Зараз нас буде виступати Джон за своїм докладом. Будь ласка, поменше шуму. Якщо ви ще не допили каву, хочете попити каву, з'їсти бутербродик, можна все це робити, але тихенько. Будь ласка. Ми продовжуємо нашу доповідь, будь ласка. Hi everyone, thank you. Hope, uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. If anybody wants to practice their English, feel free to uh, have a seat and listen. But I'll get started. So today um, I'll be talking to you about Drupal and the enterprise, uh, its rise to the ranks as an enterprise content management system, and uh, its impact on the industry as a whole. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, and uh, my experience and why I hope I'm qualified to talk to you about this stuff today. Then uh, we'll take a bit of a walk uh, through time, starting with the birth of enterprise content management and uh, the consolidation of the industry. And then we'll look at how Drupal matured throughout that timeline and how the two paths sort of converge. And uh, that brings us sort of to the present where we look at Drupal's impact on uh, current customers and enterprise content management. And finally, we'll kind of look at towards the future uh, for future concerns and emerging trends for clients of uh, enterprise content management systems. So first, a little bit about me. So I'm uh, the CTO of uh, ImageX, uh, relatively new to the company, but I've uh, been in the industry for, for 20 years. I've run my own uh, digital agency, as well as uh, being uh, a VP technology for a global company owned by WPP, which is uh, one of the big um, companies that acquire, uh, they own about 200 uh, agencies worldwide, of which I, I was the VP for one of them. So uh, they employ like 200,000 employees worldwide. They're gigantic and they're based in the UK. Uh, so a little bit of background on uh, what I've done in the past. I've run teams across all these technologies and platforms from e-commerce, of course, content management systems, uh, infrastructure, analytics, and various uh, development frameworks as well. Uh, personally, I've done development on all these uh, various enterprise systems throughout my, my days when I was still coding. Um, and now, of course, I'm heavily focused on Drupal with ImageX. And these are some of the enterprise customers that I've dealt with. Uh, a lot of these are ImageX customers, but I've dealt with all of them either at ImageX or in my previous experience. They're all large, multi-billion dollar corporations and uh, multinationals. So they're your typical sort of enterprise content management system customer base. About half of these are, are Drupal customers. So next, we'll kind of take a little bit of uh, a walk through historical, uh, historically how the, in how the industry has developed over time, and then we'll look at how Drupal kind of fits in with that. Uh, so what, what exactly is enterprise content management? Um, it's basically a, an umbrella term that covers a whole bunch of different technologies. But primarily, uh, we're talking about web content management, search, collaboration, uh, digital asset management, workflow, and even uh, you know, scanning and sourcing of documents, physical documents uh, that a lot of large enterprises deal with on a daily basis. Uh, primarily, the, the platforms we're talking about, like Drupal today, are generally classified as web content management systems. Uh, but really, today, all content is on the web. So um, really, uh, the, the, the two terms are used interchangeably pretty much enterprise content management and web content management. Uh, I did a project once for Canadian government where we uh, scanned in and digitized 15,000 government documents uh, into PDFs and then distributed it over the web. So is that enterprise content or document management or is it web content management? So that's just kind of an example of how the terms and the industry is kind of blurred between those kind of concepts. Uh, so, if we take a, a walk through time, you know, all the way back in, in uh, 98, Interwoven uh, 
first came out with the enterprise content management system, hot on their heels was Vignette. And at that point, that's when the term enterprise content management kind of was coined and is traditionally uh, attributed to Interwoven's team site product. Um, and since then, you know, around 2001, the Drupal 1.0 uh, or D1 was released. Um, not really considered an enterprise content management system yet, but that's kind of the timeline. But along the way, Sitecore, a huge player today, was launched. Uh, Day, uh, Day Software launched uh, CQ. And uh, Alfresco, an, an open source player earlier on. I'll talk more about them later. Microsoft jumps into the, into the mix with SharePoint. Uh, and then around 2009 is kind of a critical point in the industry where things shifted. Uh, Autonomy, which is actually a, a big data player, they decide that this industry is getting too big. So what they do at this point is they acquire Interwoven. Um, and later on, Autonomy has other um, other moves in the industry and other uh, problems that we'll talk about later. But at this point, the industry is starting to mature. And uh, throughout the next uh, 10 years plus, uh, there's a lot of maturity and consolidation in the industry. So that's what we're talking about next. Um, you know, uh, around 2009, there's a huge, that huge acquisition. Uh, it's a $775 million acquisition. Uh, U.S. autonomy buying interwoven in 2009. And they go on two years later to sell the entire company autonomy to HP for $11 billion. So that is still, I think, the record for uh, industry consolidation in IT so far. But it didn't end very well. <laughs> A couple of years later, HP ends up suing the founder of uh, autonomy claiming that he inflated the revenues during the acquisition. And a couple of years after that, HP writes down their $11 billion acquisition by $8 billion. So they basically have to go back to their shareholders and say that $8 billion of that $11 billion was wasted. Um, and I believe they're still in litigation today. So it's uh, quite, a messy, um, quite a messy path for autonomy you know, right back from, trace back all the way to 98. Uh, but there, there are other stories that went a lot better. Uh, Adobe, Adobe goes on a shopping spree around the same time. So in 2009, they acquire Omniture, which is uh, not a CMS, it's a, um, it's an analytics package, a huge one, a market leader. So they start with, with um, Omniture, and next, they acquire day software, so CQ. And what they do with CQ is, uh, at first they, take, they keep it fairly isolated. They, uh, they continue to develop it. They release CQ5 shortly after the acquisition. And then they release CQ6, at which point they rename uh, CQ into Adobe Experience Manager, or AEM. Uh, and they continue to buy. They, they, these guys like to go shopping. They, they buy Live Fire in 2016, which is a community management platform. And what they do with all these acquisitions, there's a lot more of them, uh, beyond Omniture, uh, AEM, and Livewire, Live Fire. They create what they call uh, the Adobe Marketing Cloud. So uh, Experience Manager is the old CQ5 product. Uh, Analytics is Omniture and social is live fire. But they, they keep, they're, they're, they bought uh, more and more and they've created what they call their marketing cloud and what they've termed as the, a best of breed platform. And what that means is they go out and they buy the leaders in the various tool sets being analytics, uh, enterprise content management, social, targeting, personalization, and they combine them through integration to create this cloud. So that is one strategy that um, Adobe has adopted. Oracle has adopted a similar uh, strategy of acquiring products like ATG and uh, created their own cloud. Uh, Drupal and Sitecore have taken another approach which is typically referred to as uh, an integrated platform where everything is kind of built into one tool set. Um, so there's kind of advantages and disadvantages to both. 
but uh, Adobe has taken this um, concept and they're not done. Just last month they acquired Magento. So the next square in their cloud here is obviously going to be commerce. So look for that. Um, and we'll find out a little bit later how successful this was. Uh, another example um, is open text. So they stayed much more focused. In 2006, they, they buy Red Dot. Again, open text wasn't really in the space, like autonomy was, wasn't either. They entered the space by acquiring Red Dot, which is a very popular uh, platform at the time. Um, and they kept going. 2009, they brought Vignette. And they kept going. In 2016, after uh, HP kind of blew up with autonomy, they wrote off $8 billion, and what was left of the autonomy acquisition, they sold off. And one of the sales was to open text of TeamSight. So TeamSight, if you can remember what I said earlier, that was originally um, uh, Interwoven's product from 1998. <laughs> so it became... Um, um, uh, autonomy, then it became HP, and right now it sits with open text still. Uh, so what was Drupal doing uh, all this time? So this is uh, the Drupal timeline through, you know, almost till today. Uh, in D 2001, D1 released, you know, some really great traction there, but still more of a, a build-it-yourself kind of tool set. Uh, D2, some more cool stuff, translation, permissions, user ratings. D3 adds nodes, content types, and commenting. And then D4, there's a big shift. They start adding a bunch of, uh, of technology and functionality that really brings it right up into enterprise content management space. Uh, and it continues to mature all the way through kind of 2007, 4.7 timeframe. Um, so D5, D6, D7, D8, they keep adding to that. So, but there's a bit of a shift in, uh, in 2007. So Dries uh, states that you know, it becomes clear to him that Drupal needs to grow, and it needs a company focused on helping organi large organizations like MTV, who he was working with at the time in 2007, uh, to be successful with software on a larger scale. So he references directly Red Hat. And he likes their model. He likes the open source with commercial support. Um, it should be interesting to point out also that Alfresco, another focus CMS, has the same idea actually a little bit earlier, more in the 2004, 2005 timeframe. And there, Alfresco was launched from a bunch of interwoven um, team site guys that left interwoven. And they started Alfresco. And they're big believers in open source. But what they did was, they released Alfresco, a Java-based open source uh, CMS, at the same time as launching their uh, s commercial support. But even though they launched earlier, they actually lagged behind Drupal significantly in feature set. So they had that big commercial push, lots of funding uh, earlier on, but they had a much more immature product. And I actually uh, implemented Alfresco earlier on for one of those clients. Um, and they had a really great story, a really same, very similar model to, to Drupal and, and Acquia, but uh, not quite as successful. And later on, I'll show you what happens to, to Alfresco is essentially they, they started off trying to balance web content management with uh, enterprise document management. So they had a lot of file management functionality early on. And later on, their web content management piece kind of drifts off and has some early momentum but dies away. And now today they're primarily focused on document management, which is this entire industry on its own now. They've kind of branched off. Um, so enterprise content management is kind of branched off from web content management, which is a huge player, and then or a big part of the market. And then document management, which is more traditional uh, internal IT focus and not so much uh, end user focus like web content management. Um, so Acquia launches in 2007. By 2008, they're commercially supporting uh, Acquia Drupal distribution. And uh, they, they, they launch sort of a strategic vision focusing on scalability and usability. And what that means is it creates sort of uh, uh, three pillars of, of focus for them. 
One is subscription-based support for Drupal in general. Uh, Acquia Gardens, which is their Drupal for everyone, which kind of evolves into uh, Site Factory today. But that's really like a quicker path to market, lower technical knowledge required, but also focused on still very large enterprises. And then Ac Acquia Fields, which has matured into Acquia Cloud, which is their infrastructure solution, obviously, that uh, everyone is familiar with. Um, so now a kind of a pattern emerges as Drupal and uh, the other timeline that I showed earlier kind of converge. Um, this is called the uh, Forrester wave. So Forrester is an, um, an analyst group. So they just publish, they study the IT industry and they publish very expensive reports to enterprise customers to teach them about what's going on in the industry. And uh, people rely a lot on Forrester and another company, which I'll talk about in a moment, for their expertise in what's going on in industry when they're selecting these you know, multi-million dollar implementation and licensing projects. So in 2009, we noticed uh, some of the big players that I've talked about already, Interwoven, uh, Open Text, Day Software, uh, Microsoft. Um, so these are kind of the big players in 2009 when that acquisition spree starts happening. So Fatwire gets bought out by Oracle. Uh, Open Text buys uh, Red Dot, which isn't on here, but they eventually buy Vignette. Uh, Interwoven is bought by um, Autonomy, which enters the, the space. Uh, Day Software is acquired by Adobe, which enters the space. So by 2013, we see all those players now. Adobe moves up with their, so their strategy was very successful. Buying all those players, buying Day Software, which is a really uh, forward-thinking uh, web content management system, that moves them right up to the top of the, to the wave. Uh, Sitecore is a fairly new entrant, but has a proprietary um, model, but very similar to Drupal in that everything's kind of integrated in one package. Not a whole bunch of disparate tools like uh, Oracle and Adobe and IBM have done. Uh, SDL ends up uh, eventually emerging, uh, merging with another uh, client, uh, another platform and moving up, and so does Ektron eventually. And Acquia, for the first time, shows up. There's another wave layer here that's not showing up in the color, but there's three layers, and Acquia, for the first time, shows up. Uh, within the, the wave. Um, move forward to 2015, Adobe and Sitecore are now clear leaders and Acquia is moving up very quickly. Um, fast forward again to 2017 and we have three major uh, players emerging. It's Adobe, Sitecore, who here looks like they've shifted down a little bit, but Acquia, Adobe, and, and Sitecore are really the, the key players, and we can see that by the other analyst group, Gardner. Um, by 2017, by them, there's a clear grouping at the top there, Sitecore, Adobe, and Acquia. So the, the two firms relatively agree with one another. Um, I like to point to this cluster, because those are the three that I feel are the market leaders right now. Sitecore being a, a Microsoft-based uh, C-sharp solution, uh, Adobe is uh, Java, and Acquia is, of course, uh, Drupal PHP-based. So that takes us to kind of the three leaders today and uh, what's really important and why Drupal raised itself so quickly up the ranks. Uh, I, I kind of like to point out two key factors. One is the importance of open source. So the other two big players, Adobe and Sitecore, are both proprietary um, solutions. Even to get access to the software, you either have to be a paying customer or a certified partner. Um, so very few people have actually even gets to work with these platforms unless um, they're already bought into their, to the platform and, and the ecosystem within those two vendors. Um, and there's various reasons for doing that, but Drupal is much more ubiquitous, uh, very low barrier to entry, obviously, and the community has just grown um, exponentially, and that accounts for a big part of its rise up the ranks to the enterprise content management uh, network. And, the other thing is Acquia's really early focus on the cloud. Uh, before 
the cloud was very prevalent, uh, Acquia was already thinking that way. And what, that ha what, what happened there is uh, uh, enterprises who adopted the cloud early uh, really noticed Acquia very early because all the other players like Adobe and Sitecore, uh, all their pricing models were server-based. So whenever IT company or IT departments would ask them about uh, cloud-based pricing models, all the salespeople had no idea how to deal with it. Like I, I've been personally in on uh, vendor selections where we've asked them about, so how, what if we need to scale up 24 servers tomorrow for two weeks because we're presenting a product at E3 and we're expecting like a hundred time increase in traffic on the website, but only for about two weeks. But you know, we've only got licenses for five servers. So um, Sitecore, Adobe, they didn't really have any answers for these questions. Only recently, even in the last two years ago, they didn't have very clear answers for this. About a year or so ago, Adobe started playing around with a cloud-based solution, but only for the lower end of the spectrum, very low end, uh, cheaper uh, licensing models. So the, the larger scale ones, they didn't want to rob themselves of all that huge licensing, millions of dollars of licensing fees. So that really hurt them and really gave uh, Drupal a huge push as well. Um, so here's something we, you know, we typically go through when we're evaluating uh, other vendors, when we're trying to convince people uh, to go with a Drupal solution. You know, we look at things like strategic fit, which everyone's pretty much aligned on these days. Cost, where Drupal obviously has a clear lead. Scalability, with the cloud offering that it gives a, a gig, big plus on the scalability side. Uh, extensible platform, the community, and the open source gives Drupal a lead there as well. Uh, support, you know, for a while there, Drupal was lagging, but Acquia has really caught up with, uh, at least on commercial support. Uh, Community-wise, there's always been really strong support there. Uh, but for these large enterprises, for, for whatever reason, they like to pay for, for support so that they can pick up the phone and call specific people and, and get specific uh, support when needed. And then speed to market also, Drupal, uh, obviously a quick, uh, big leader there. Uh, running out of time, so I'll run through this last little bit a little bit quicker. But that leads us to kind of future, future trends. What's important to enterprise customers going forward? Uh, I've identified three that I think are worth talking about now. Uh, headless functionality, everyone is talking about that a lot. Just, uh, you know, Drupal's been able to do that for quite a while. Um, uh, Sitecore just released this last year a headless module. So they, they see these tr same trends. And now, you know, they're actually trailing Drupal in, in catching up and st on the strat strategy side, both on the cloud front and now on the headless front. And there's emerging uh, um, competition there. There's peer headless uh, content management systems now because there's a massive trend there for you know, distributed, um, decoupled, and API-driven uh, front ends. Uh, continued momentum on D8 is, is critical. You know, migration and rapid adoption is things that we need to be aware of going forward. And personalization. So the big leaders uh, there or uh, Sitecore, actually. They've been doing it for a long time. They've got a lot of patents in the personalization space. They're generally recognized as kind of the market leader of the three. But with uh, Acquia Lyft, uh, Drupal's catching up pretty quick. Uh, we're doing a lot of work uh, currently with, with Lyft, and I think that's going to be a critical um, growth segment for, for Drupal in the future. Um, and that's it. So thank you for your time. Uh, I think we still have a bit of time for questions, if anybody has any. No? Yeah? All right. Thank you.